Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical DIY Coach, and this is your pro tip of the day, where you could be a pro, learn from the pros. Every day at 1030, let's get to it. Hey guys, today we're going to look at the really common topic that my breaker keeps tripping. You know, what do I do? My breaker keeps tripping. Either it's a slow trip, it's tripping randomly, or it's tripping instantly. We're going to touch all those. Remember, never repeat anything in these videos. Just use them for educational purposes only. All right, so here's the deal. There's a couple different scenarios. So let's look at scenario one that my breaker keeps tripping randomly. So I've got my you know, breaker. You know, it's tripping every other day or it's tripping once a week. What's going on here? Well, there could be many things. Let's start at the panel. At the panel, the breaker could be failing. Breakers just fail over time. They're just components. They're made. They're made very cheaply. And they just fail over time. And sometimes it can be getting weak and then it just lets go. It gets weak and then it just lets go. Another thing that could be happening is you could have a piece of equipment that's plugged in somewhere in that circuit that is starting to fail. Either a compressor starting to go bad, a motor starting to go bad, and occasionally when it gets hot enough, you know, eventually it trips. That could be happening. Another thing that you could be doing is overloading this circuit, and that's really what they're designed to do. Well, they're really designed for several things. You know, if you overload the circuit, if you have a short circuit you know, ground fault, different things. Breakers are designed for different things. But one of its main functions is that if you overload the circuit with too many amps, it's going to turn off. So you may have a breaker that, you know, is running more receptacles than you think. It might be running your garage, your dining room, and part of your living room. It may be running your garage, bedroom one, bedroom two, and bedroom three. And what's happening is, is you know, you've got your radio plugged in, you got your iPhone plugged in, you know, the uh, Dyson's charging, and then you turn around and plug something else in, and it's tripping, and you're just not thinking about it because you're in the living room one day, and then you're in the bedroom one day, and you're thinking that this doesn't relate. But it may because you could have, you know, that one circuit could be wiring a large part of your home. Another thing that it could be down these lines so that's the one when you're tripping the uh breaker randomly okay just look at those things look at what you have plugged in the component may be failing and may need to be replaced so those are just a couple things now let's look at the scenario okay when the breaker is tripping instantly and this is one that you've really got to watch out for that the breaker is tripping instantly and what's happening here is that there is there is a dead short somewhere. Now, a dead short is just like it sounds. It's when those two wires are touching. Whether it's touching, you know, one way a dead short can happen is through a staple. If a staple got tightened too tight on, you know, on the installation. And sometimes it doesn't show up for years later. Another way a dead short can be happening is if a piece of equipment is failing. Like a compressor or a motor is just dead shorting. Those windings are touching. Boom, it's tripping the breaker instantly. Or you've got um, another common one that happens is one of the wires inside of the electrical box has just a little slit on it, okay? It's got a little slit from where somebody took the razor knife during the install, and it's touching the back of the box. Or it's pinching. And, you know, you think that the day that, that it happens, let's say somebody installs a receptacle, buries that receptacle in, and it's almost touching that metal box to where it would short out. It may stay that way for 25 years, and then one day you go to unplug something and spark. The breaker pops, the breaker hits, or that receptacle just moves a little bit through time, and then it finally starts touching. Or what happens most, you know, oftentimes is that when the electricians, and you guys know that I never recommend to put a razor blade on, on wire, I always have you slit the end and peel it back, and I've taught you that in some of my instructional videos. But what they'll do is, and electricians still do it today, when they're roughing in that house and they're cutting in their joints, they will take a razor knife and slit down the back of that wire. The reason you never do it is because you don't see the problem that day, but 20, 25 years later, that wire will actually open up, and that insulation will expose full copper. And it's dangerous for somebody to come back to work on it, and it often can cause a short in the wire later. So I'll pull the receptacle out, and I'll see a big nick in it, or I'll see a big slit spot where somebody took the razor knife 25 years ago, and that's what's finally causing the dead short. So with that being said, you got the breaker that's tripping slow, you, you know, uh, occasionally you got the breaker that's tripping instantly. And now I want to talk about the breaker that is tripping after being on for just a couple of minutes. And you got to be really careful of this one too. So anytime, let's go back real quick on that one. 
When you've got the breaker that is tripping instantly, never reset it more than one time, okay? Reset it. If it resets and it trips right back in your face, you need to stop, unplug everything in the circuit, and then, you know, slowly take your time continuing to troubleshoot because, it, you know, it can be a very dangerous situation. Now, this one that we're getting ready to talk about now can be very dangerous too. So this is the one where the breaker trips within a minute or two. This could be some extreme arcing going on. It has to be arcing very, I mean, it has to be a really bad arc for it to trip a breaker, okay? And it's got to be a dead short, but you can have it where it's not quite a dead short, but there's still arcing going on, or there's current rising and current leaking on components, and it's just not high enough to trip the breaker. And I'll give a perfect example. I don't know if you know this, but in most soils in the United States, I can take a ground rod, if you guys have learned about that on my channel, I can drive it out in the yard, which would seem like it would be a dead short. I can hook a wire up to it, land it directly to the breaker, and turn it on, and it won't trip the breaker. It's amazing because it's not pulling enough amps. You can have current leaking somewhere in your system that it's not pulling enough amps, but it's still, you know, uh, proposing a hazard, right? It's still, uh, you know, causing a hazard. So it's on, and what happens is, is as that current rises, it finally gets high enough that it'll trip that breaker. Or something is arcing so bad that it trips the breaker, but at first it's not enough. It's enough to cause a fire, but it's not enough amps to trip the breaker. And what happens is, is it slowly rises that current as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter and trips, you know, like a minute or two later. Sometimes it can be a motor or compressor, again, is starting to fail. And what happens is when that motor first starts, it's not shorting. But then as that motor rises and the current gets higher and higher, eventually gets hot enough and it shorts out. So the three different ways are it is tripping instantly, it is tripping over one to two minutes, or it's tripping randomly. So hopefully that added a little bit to you today. Uh, you know, there's a million different scenarios with these electrical things, but as you continue to watch this channel, we continue to grow together. I want you guys to learn a little bit more, put another feather in your hat, and ultimately become a pro DIYer and a pro electrician. If you don't know about it, I have the Electrical Code Coach channel, and that one teaches you all about the code, all about how to get your electrical license, and just to be super sharp in the game. So if you really want to be a pro DIYer, you may want to consider checking out that channel as well. I'm the Electrical DIY Coach. This is your pro tip of the day. Let's get to it. Hey, thanks for watching. That's it for today, but you can join us tomorrow at 1030. Let's get to it.